All right, so let's talk some Lenovo Legion Go. I received the unit on a Thursday night, I didn't have a lot of time to play with it that night, so I waited until the next day when I learned that the in-laws were coming into town. So that means I don't have access to my office slash gaming room slash guest room. And Friday nights just so happened to be my Dungeons and Dragons night. So I thought, what's a better first game to play on the Legion Go besides a browser-based Dungeons and Dragons game, right? But I wanted to see if the Legion Go was up for the challenge and if I could get it set up that fast, because after I put the kid down, I had about 30 minutes to get ready for the D&D session. So it was a race against the clock to get the Legion Go set up for the first time. I think I'm gonna be beholden to Windows updates. I'm not gonna get to D&D in time. Come on, Windows 11. Come on, I got like five minutes. Let me get a browser open. The Lenogo. Come on, Windows. You're taking so long. I've got like two minutes. Check that out. And I gotta say, it was a pretty cool first experience with the Legion Go, putting it in FPS mode and being able to use that ergonomic mouse to move around in the browser. And I don't know, I guess I just found it more engaging than using just a regular mouse. And along with the right hand controller I used in FPS mode as a mouse, I used a USB-C keyboard on the other end so I could type out commands and use keyboard shortcuts. But later that night, after the D&D session was over, I went ahead and started installing some games, which can be really slow if you're doing them all over Wi-Fi. So I found a trick to get some Steam games downloaded a lot quicker. I actually logged into Steam on my gaming PC and used Steam's built-in backup tool to actually back up the game on the Legion Go that was on the same network as my gaming PC. You do have to do a little bit of work, but after a couple of clicks, you're downloading games a lot faster from your gaming PC than you would from Steam's slow servers. First thing you have to do is go into Windows and make the game repository on your Legion Go discoverable on your local network. And then on the gaming PC on Steam, you go into the backup tool, find the Legion Go directory that you made shareable, and then back up the game to that directory. And that essentially just makes a copy of the game from your gaming PC onto the Lenovo Legion Go on your local network. Of course, there are faster manual methods like an SD card or a flash drive. I even considered a USB-C to ethernet adapter, but I didn't have one laying around and I didn't feel like buying one. So let's go over the three scenarios that I wanted to use the Legion Go for. So the first scenario is one like I mentioned before, where if the in-laws are visiting and I don't have access to the office slash guest room. The second scenario is a little bit more specific, but it's when I'm in the backseat of the car with the kid and we're traveling somewhere like to visit the in-laws for instance, and I need something to entertain myself while I'm passing over snacks and crayons, you know what I mean? And the third scenario is when I'm staying the night away from home, let's say example at the in-laws house, and I still want that PC gaming experience because I don't really have a gaming laptop. But first, really quick, let's just go over what the Legion Go was all about. The Legion Go features a large 8.8 .8 inch QHD plus display with smooth refresh rates up to 144 hertz. And when you play a game that's really enhanced by the quality of the screen, you really do notice it. I was playing a little bit of Halo Infinite and it was running very smoothly and man, that screen really made it pop. The device includes two USB-C 4.0 O ports, allowing for expanded docking capabilities and connected peripherals like a keyboard and additional drives. But one thing you won't need is of course a mouse. The Legion Go has two detachable controllers with a unique FPS mode. This mode turns the right controller into an ergonomic mouse, which is probably the device's most unique feature. Sitting down with a desk mat and a USB-C keyboard and playing some Dota 2 really made me understand why this thing exists. Yes, the portability and handheld mode is great, but being in FPS mode on the back patio, watching a little bit of NBA on the TV, really was a pretty cool experience. The Hall Effect joysticks on the Legion Go use magnetic fields for detection, leading to reduced wear and tear and virtually eliminating stick drift and dead zones. If you are looking to play a first person shooter with thumbsticks, I do suggest editing the settings within the game because the joysticks just aren't very big and they don't have a very broad range. They're pretty small compared to the overall size of the unit. So if you go into your settings, adjust your sensitivity, you can tweak things around and make it feel more comfortable like a traditional console controller. The Legion Go also comes with its own gaming front end and game browser called Legion Space. This provides a user-friendly dashboard for accessing and managing gaming platforms like Steam and Epic Game Store, games, settings, and more. The Legion Go offers multiple gaming modes, including handheld with both controllers attached, FPS mode with the detached right controller as a mouse, detachable mode where both controllers are held in each hand, and battle station modes where the unit is docked as a full PC. Let me know what mode you think you would use most in the comments. The Legion Go offers an efficient cooling system that offers several preset thermal modes. I keep my fans on the lower settings when I'm in handheld mode because my settings are most likely going to be tweaked down. And then I crank the fans all the way up to max when I'm in performance mode and connected to the charger. And it really does do a good job at keeping the temps down. But I will warn you, the fan is kind of loud. It does come with easy user upgradable storage as well as some fast LPDDR5X memory. So no compromises there. It also came with Lenovo's Legion Ultimate support providing 24 seven access to technicians. Me having a background in technical support, I did want to try theirs out. So I went over to 
their chat servers, got online with the technician, and just asked him a few questions, mainly if there were just any BIOS updates available and where I could find them. Overall, the support was an A-plus experience. I got connected to an agent really fast, and he was able to answer my question promptly and accurately. So good on you, Lenovo. After a few days with Legion Go and trying to figure out how I wanted to review this thing, and I noticed that most of the other reviews were taking the Legion Go and comparing it to its peers in its price bracket, but I don't have any of those other handhelds. And then I thought, okay, well, I'll just do the benchmark thing where I gather a bunch of data from benchmarks and then show you guys all that data. Then I scrapped that idea too because I just didn't want to get in the weeds of benchmark numbers. Because there's just so many factors that go into running a game on this thing. One factor is the settings on that game. Another factor is if the game allows you to do upscaling that the Lenovo Legion Go supports. You have your performance modes that Lenovo offers. And then you have just Windows being Windows. So I said, let's just play the Legion Go, play some games that I like to play, and then tell you guys about it. So the first play session that I wanted to do testing with, I wanted to do it in handheld mode. So I turned the resolution all the way down to 1280 by 800, knocked down the refresh rate to 60 hertz, put the OS in balanced power mode, and put the fans on balance mode as well, and kept the brightness to about 80-90%. So I know I said handheld mode, but I just meant battery mode, because the first game I played was Dota 2. And if you played Dota, you know that you have to use mouse and keyboard. So I actually did set up the Legion Go on the back patio, propped it up, got my keyboard out, and put it in FPS mode, and played a full 30 plus minute games on second to highest settings. And it ran super smooth. I got pretty much full 60 frames the whole time. And man, it looked really nice on that 8.8 inch screen though, for real. And the second game in the lineup, was none other than Fortnite. I played a full game of solo battle royale, which I'm not sure exactly how long it took. I think I finished like 10th place. I don't know how long that normally takes. But after the Fortnite match was over, I went and played my first ever game of Overwatch. I think I may have played a little bit of the beta of the first Overwatch, but I figured I'd give it a shot. It's a current AAA game that's out right now that I think would play pretty well on the handheld. So in handheld mode, it ran perfectly smooth. No problems, no hitches in frame rate. I ran it pretty much on the highest settings with no issues. But after all three of those games are finished, I was around about 20%. I started getting that notification from Windows and that was pretty much my play session. It lasted about two hours. If I've had an uninterrupted two hour gaming session, something has gone horribly wrong. So that was more than enough for me on battery. And of course, if you had a Legion Go and tried to mimic that same exact play session, if you didn't have the same exact settings that I did, your results could be completely different. If you maybe turn your brightness down to half of what I had, maybe you can get another 30 minutes out of it. That's why I didn't want to get so deep into the benchmarking because the results will vary based on so many different factors. So let's get back to those three scenarios that I mentioned before. So scenario one was when the in-laws were visiting and I didn't have access to the gaming PC. So you know, normal night with the in-laws visiting, had dinner, made a pot of coffee, and everybody watched TV that night. I'm not the biggest Columbo fan in the world, no hate if you are, but I found that as a good opportunity to break out the Legion Go and play a little bit of Halo 3 multiplayer. And after everybody went to sleep that night, I snuck out back to the back patio and put that bad boy in FPS mode, played a little Dota 2, a little Halo Infinite, and a little bit of Lego Star Wars as well. Scenario two was sitting in the backseat of the car with the kid on the way to Thanksgiving vacation. So when I was in the backseat of the car, divvying out snacks and juice, I was playing a little bit of Streets of Rage 4 in handheld mode. But one thing of note that I was really paranoid about when I was riding in the car was the fact that I had to keep putting the Legion Go back into the case whenever I actually had to do stuff with the kid. And I was nervous that it wasn't going back into sleep mode, but maybe that's just me being paranoid because I've had a lot of laptops with sleep mode issues and stuffing them into backpacks and then pulling them out burning hot. But I didn't melt my Legion Go, so we're all good. The one major thing I was worried about when staying over the in-laws house was not having access to fast internet. So I had to make sure that everything was downloaded and updated before I left my house. The internet is just that bad out there. So I checked Steam, everything was updated that I wanted to play, and I was good to go. So we made the successful voyage, had some turkey, and everybody kind of started winding down and going to sleep. That's when I found my opportunity to start setting up my battle station. So then I started getting sleepy off that turkey myself, so I put the Legion Go in handheld mode and headed off to bed. So I wanted to try something that's really gonna stress test the Legion Go. So I thought, what's a game that even desktops had trouble running? And I'm like, there's there's no way that Starfield's running this great and looks this good. Like I figured if it if it ran smoothly, it would look like crap because I've seen some machines running Starfield on low settings and it doesn't look great. But like 
the detail on what you had in the foreground on on the handheld mode it blew me away like the upscaling was that good i went into the settings i made sure that it was set to low because you know it automatically sets your machine to what settings you think it thinks it should have so the game had already set it to like the optimal settings which was everything on low and then the upscaling on so the upscaling was doing all the heavy lifting and man that's just one of those games that's like you know steam has their steam deck approved games starfield is a it gets the dual wielding dad thumbs up approved game to run on the Legion Go. The Lenovo Legion Go is a beautifully designed piece of hardware with a very unique design that offers something for everyone. Is it for everyone? No, it's big, it's expensive, the battery life isn't great if you're used to using devices like Nintendo Switches, but those are the three big deal breakers in my opinion. But if you're in the market for one of these handheld PCs and you'll actually get the value from it, I will definitely recommend it over its two competitors. The ROG Ally looks great, the Steam Deck looks fantastic, but the Lenovo Legion Go just seems like it's much more up my alley. Living that dad life, you wanna have that versatility and that's what the Lenovo Legion Go is all about. About. But if you're not ready to spend 700 bucks on a gaming handheld, I made a video here about the Ambernick RG35XX, which is a way more affordable and portable unit that runs up to Game Boy Advance games that I'm really enjoying playing with. Until next time, peace.